All right, all right. I was literally done making this video about the trade deadline. You know, I did the whole little thing about, oh, what are the Lakers going to do? Oh, it's so crazy. The Mavs might trade for him. And then I see on my phone, breaking news, the Dallas Mavericks have traded for Kyrie Irving. And now I have to re-record the whole video. So let's just get down to business. What in the world is going on in Dallas? It's your boy 2KJ here. Welcome back to another episode. And today we're talking about what has already happened in the trade deadline and what might happen in the coming days. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Now let's get this thing going, man. What is going on with the Mavericks? Mark Cuban finally did something for Luka. I made a whole bit about how the Mavericks aren't going to do anything for Luka and he's going to leave. I mean, I still think he's going to leave, but having Kyrie now, it's interesting to look at this team and see the West is wide open this year. You know, you have to make big trades because this is probably your one chance for a lot of teams to maybe make the finals. And the Mavs are doing just that. But there's a couple of the teams I think can make some similar trades. Maybe not that big, but still trades that can improve their team drastically by just trading for one or two players. So let's get into it. And, you know, <laughs> let's get into this trade deadline, man. Let's go. All right, all right. So let's talk about the main dish in this episode right now. What in the world is going on in Dallas? And it looks like they traded Kyrie for Dorian Finney-Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, a 2029 first round pick, and two second round picks, which would be 2027 and 2029, in exchange for Irving and then Markeith Morris. Now, I'm, I'm at a loss. You know, I did not expect this trade to happen at all. I definitely thought he was going to go to the Lakers, but it makes sense. I just wasn't really sure what the Mavericks had to give up to get Kyrie. And I'm not really sure how this team will mesh together. Obviously, the Mavericks have a lot of problems besides the fact that Luka is really their only offensive talent. They lack a lot of bench depth and they really don't have a good defensive team at all which will get you killed in the playoffs in the finals because rotations are smaller in the playoffs so not having a really good defensive team can kill you uh i i think this is good on mark cuban a lot of people have been giving him flack about not really doing anything for the team and not surrounding luke with any talent and i feel like this is him going hey i'm doing what i can i got luke with some talent it's up to them to win and i mean if you're gonna get him anybody kyrie irving is as good as any they lost brunson in the offseason this is a pretty big upgrade from brunson I think consistency wise, maybe not, but upper talent wise, of course, you know, Kyrie's, he's him. You know, we've seen what he can do in the playoffs. We've seen what he can do in the finals. And I think this is going to be a pretty big break for the Mavericks, but we'll see how these two mesh together. I'm not entirely convinced the Luka Kyrie experiment is going to work out. He also only has this year on his contract and then he has to re-sign. So will he even re-sign with Mavericks? I don't really know, you know, I don't, I'm not sure about this half year rental of Kyrie, he get injured, he might not mesh well with Luka, I'm not sure if Luka will be able to take as many shots as he has been taking, he might have to give up some shots for Kyrie, and what about Christian Wood, you know, he was supposed to be their new guy, and now he's gonna take like four shots a game, I feel like he might be getting moved as well, and this is, this is an interesting time for the Mavericks, I think they, they definitely did the right thing by getting Lucas some help in this win now West. And we'll have to see, but speaking about another team that's in win now mode and a team that has a lot better chance at winning the finals this year, let's talk about the Denver Nuggets and see what they've got going. So if you've been watching basketball, you pretty much know by now that the Denver Nuggets are the best team in the NBA. They pretty much have a perfect team. They have incredible defensive lineups. They have offense to spare Jokic is probably going to get his third MVP here their team is now healthy finally for the first time since 2020 Jamal Murray is back to playing like he was before they have pretty much everything a team could want and need for a big playoff run but obviously when teams like this they get into that win now mode especially with the West being wide open they want to see what they can do just to make sure that they seal the deal and their trade target here is OG on Anubi a young star in the making from Toronto who's developed into one of the top perimeter defenders in the league. And still with room to grow, having him on the Nuggets would make them unfair. Their defensive lineups are already incredible and it would be prison if they had him on the wing. The one massive problem with a trade like this 
is they'd likely have to give up more than just first round picks. The Nuggets are a team with great depth, and by losing that, it might compromise how well they'll do in the playoffs. So I'm not really sure if a trade like this would even work out for the Nuggets. Obviously, it would be incredible to have OG on the team, but I'm not really sure they want to sacrifice depth for a better player. We've seen what that could happen, like the 2019 Warriors, they pretty much sacrificed all their depth for Kevin Durant, and when players started going down, they didn't have anybody else to step up. So I'm not really sure the Nuggets should trade for OG, and besides, we know Masai wants a haul for him. We've been hearing reports about two, even three first round picks for OG, and I don't really think the Nuggets want to give something like that up right now. They'd obviously have to give up Michael Porter Jr. They'd have to give up Bones Highland. They'd very likely have to give up at least two first round picks, maybe one and another really solid young player. And I'm not really sure the Nuggets want to do that. So in my opinion, I think the Nuggets are better off not making any deals in the deadline, but a team that definitely needs to make one, the Los Angeles Lakers, because oh boy, no Kyrie on the table. What in the world are they gonna do? Let's take a little deeper look. The Los Angeles Lakers are in deep, deep trouble right now. They suck. I don't even really know how to put it in any other way. They're just a really, really bad basketball team. And they're honestly a lesson on why you should not trade depth for star players. Because their team was perfectly fine. They had incredible depth. They had just gotten injured a little bit in AD in the playoffs because if they were healthy, they'd definitely beat the Suns that year. But they decided, well, you know, look at the Brooklyn Nets. They're going to trade for another star. We need to trade for another star. And look at both of these teams now. KD is back to being all alone, and the Lakers suck. So they really need to make a trade right now. And honestly, I was going to say they need to make a trade for Kyrie. He was probably going to be their best bet in making a run in the West. But without him, I think it's time to give those picks up and try and get some depth. The Lakers really aren't a bad team. They just lack depth. Their lineups are pretty bad. Their coaching is also really bad. But if they can get some depth and maybe Ham can save him from himself and stop playing Russ in crunch time, they might actually be able to put together a pretty decent team and maybe make the play-in or even, you know, get 7th or 8th seed in the playoffs. But for now, I really think the Lakers need to start making some calls. Gary Trent Jr. would fit really well on that team. They still have that deal, I'm sure, with Heald and Turner. I'm not really sure if they want to do it now because they do have Bryant, but they need to make a trade for definitely some wing players, definitely some shooters, and definitely defenders. They can get all three of those in one player, that'd be really good, but the Lakers just need to make a deal to get some more depth and get rid of Russ. When they get rid of him, their lineups can be spaced a lot better because Russ isn't really a shooter anymore. He can still drive, he still has a bit of athleticism, but he's not really spacing the floor as well. He's not really doing a lot for that Lakers team. So honestly, I think they should trade for maybe Gary Trent Jr. type player or somebody else like that, but I couldn't really tell you who's available on the market right now and time is definitely running out for the Lakers so this is this is going to be an interesting trade deadline I can already tell deals going on it's it's going to be a big one but for now we just have to wait and see so thank you guys for watching the video make sure to like comment subscribe if you liked it and what do you think about the trade deadline put it down there in the comments about what deals you think are going to go on or anything you think that's crazy that might happen in the coming season and we'll just have to wait and see. So thank you guys for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. Peace.